things you understand. I'm obsessed. Hello everyone, it's Grayson and this is Grayson Talks Everything. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you're not new and are returning, welcome back. Do be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. And also follow my Instagram where you can get the latest updates on when videos of mine are coming out and to admire some fan art of mine that I regularly post on there. Some of that should be showing up on the screen right now. And the link to my Instagram will always be in the description of my videos. Um, but if you want to know my Instagram tag now to follow me, that also should be showing up on the screen. All right, let's get into it. Today, the Loki series premiere premiered and um, yeah, I watched it. So here's my review and breakdown with the ending explained. There's actually a lot to uncover here um, and it's really exciting. I'm really excited to see how the show takes shape in the next coming in the next coming week so you know let's just get into the video after watching episode one of loki i gotta say i liked it a lot so much so that it might compete with wandavision for being the best marvel disney plus show as of right now but that doesn't mean it's flawless but when it comes to the positives this show definitely feels the most cinematic in scale thanks to masterful VFX, score, production design, and cinematography, with story elements that'll actually move the future of the MCU forward, and two incredible leading performances from Tom Hiddleston, who is in prime form as Loki, and Owen Wilson, who proves that he is very much still a movie star. Now, I don't know about the second episode, but the first episode was not very well paced at all. There were some big stops and starts, and throughout the first episode, there were some pretty big new MCU elements that were introduced here, which kind of ended up making up bigger plot holes in the MCU when you start to think about it more often, and it makes it not make a ton of sense at all, actually. There are also big character developments for Loki himself, while some stuff was left out when it comes to the comics. And again, as a comic book fan, that kind of upset me a little bit. But the show still is very satisfying, at least the first episode is, with again big MCU Phase 4 developments finally starting to take shape. This show also feels like it's in the MCU like straight in the MCU, rather than being MCU adjacent. This show also creates a world where the audience can see themselves in because Owen Wilson's character, Agent Mobius and Mobius, which we'll talk about more later, is a stand-in for the audience because he is a Loki and an MCU expert like us, but only due to him existing outside of the timeline, studying and policing it. The show also has amazing dialogue and a great rewatchability factor, with great callbacks and easter eggs to not just the MCU, but also to American pop culture and world history. Other actors I think deserve a shout out here are Wumi Musaku as a TVA agent and Gugu Mbatha-Ra as Judge Ravana Renslayer, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So let's break it all down, starting with the biggest question, or one of the biggest questions that arose from the first episode. What is the Time Variance Authority, otherwise known as the TVA? The organization was first introduced in Thor issue 371 by Walt Simonson and Sal Buscema. If you're a fan of those two storytellers, you'll know that they're two of the most inventive and imaginative in the big two business. That's why it shouldn't surprise you that the TVA is super weird and often features in wildly ambitious tales. The agency's first appearance was a riff on the iconic British comic series 2000 AD, a heavily armed character named Justice Peace causes chaos on Earth as he flies through the skies, implanting jaywalkers with control chips. It's a silly take on Judge Dredd, but it's also a key part of TVA history. Justice Peace is the first member of the Intergalactic Time Police that we ever meet. Since its proper debut in the next issue, the TVA has been embroiled in the Marvel Universe and its flow of time. The group acts as an independent force for making sure no one messes up the timelines, but as you can imagine, their mission puts them on a collision course with heroes and villains alike. Speaking of heroes, the TVA has big connections to the Fantastic Four, on the more villainous side is King the Conqueror as well. 
We know that he'll appear in the upcoming Ant-Man sequel, Quantumania, so don't be too surprised if Loki alludes to the character more. The odds are likely considering a TVA member shares the name with a key character from Kang's lore, which we'll get to later. Interestingly enough, in the comics, the TVA also keeps track of the multiverse, which they also alluded to in episode 1. They have the ability to destroy or change timelines if they deem them unsafe. This is now confirmed to be one of the group's purposes in the MCU 2, given the countless timelines we saw in Loki Episode 1 and upcoming Multiverse of Madness. They also keep an eye on Nexus beings, who are rare individual entities with the ability to affect probability and thus the future, thereby altering the flow of the universal time stream. These beings, each referred to as a nexus, act as the keystones of the multiverse and are crucial to its ultimate coherence and stability. And now Wanda Maximoff, now recently dubbed officially the Scarlet Witch, is one of those nexus beings which was even referenced in WandaVision. So this will definitely tie into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. In Episode 1, Loki is captured by the Time Variance Authority. He eventually ended up being tasked with closing the branching timelines that he created by leaving 2012. And he was assigned to work with Mobius M. Mobius, played by Owen Wilson. Created by writer and artist Walt Simonson, the Honorable Mr. Mobius is a black-haired, mustachioed bureaucrat who works for the TVA as a senior executive of middle management. In his Marvel Comics debut, we learned he originally held a position in junior management before rising up in the ranks of the organization, which has a fascinating purpose, which you guys already know. Much like his tampering with the events of 2012's The Avengers and Loki's Avengers Endgame cameo, the TVA has cracked down on a few bumps in the space-time continuum in the comics, some created by even the most heroic of characters. Despite the Time Variance Authority's introduction five years earlier, Mobius M. Mobius would not appear in the Marvel comics until June 1991 in Fantastic Four issue 353. The issue sees Marvel's superhero family taken in by the TVA agent Justice Peace and prosecuted by Mobius for various offenses, including the destruction of a time bubble intended for the ridding of their timeline decades later. Before managing to escape and erasing their criminal record, which put Mobius in hot water. Mobius and Mobius would also assume a judicial position at the Time Variance Authority, as seen in the February 2006 issue of She Hulk, in which Jennifer Walters is tried for warning Hawkeye about his impending death. In other words, Mobius has had a bit of an antagonistic quality in the comics, which Owen Wilson's portrayal in Loki seems to be slightly diverting from. Other than his hair color, that may or may not be the only creative liberty the series is taking with the character. Gugu Mbatha Ra's role in Loki has officially been revealed to be Judge Ravana Renslayer, an agent with the Time Variance Authority, an organization responsible for maintaining the proper flow of time. Renslayer has a lot of comic book history, and she is most well known to have a deeply connected relationship to Kang, a conquering time-traveling villain who could finally appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Gugu Mbatha Ra's Loki casting was announced in February of 2020. At the time, reports did not state which character she'd play in the Disney Plus series, however, it was revealed her role would be that of the leading lady. Now that Mbatha Ra has been confirmed as Judge Renslayer, it makes sense that she's in a leading role in the series. Considering Loki will explore how the trickster god broke reality and the attempts of the TVA to fix the timeline, it's possible Judge Renslayer will emerge as the series antagonist, one with a plan to ensure Loki doesn't ruin whatever she's scheming behind the scenes. Ravana Renslayer was first introduced in 1965's Avengers issue 23 and has gone by several different aliases, including Terminatrix and Temptress. She was born in the late 40th century and is the daughter of King Corellius, a ruler of one of Kang's kingdoms. While Ravana doesn't have any superhuman abilities of her own, she is highly intelligent and skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and proficient in the use of advanced future technology. Using a teleporter and other futuristic tech to detect energy fields, Ravana is capable of traveling through time. She has gone up against the likes of the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, who attempted to stop her from retrieving the Ultimate Nullifier, a weapon capable of destroying anyone the Wilder wishes. 
In this instance, when Slayer wanted to destroy King the Conqueror, who opted to kill the Avengers rather than save her while visiting the Grand Master. At other times, she's been the Avengers' ally, though it's usually short-lived, working with them to defeat Kang the Conqueror from taking over the 40th century. Renslayer is relentless, passionate, and incredibly capable. Judge Renslayer's link to Kang is crucial. Her presence in the Loki series suggests there might be plans to bring the time-traveling villain into the MCU as early on as the series. It's important to note that Lovecraft Country's Jonathan Majors was officially cast as Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man 3, which means plans for his role in the MCU are already in motion. Considering Ant-Man came up with the idea to use the Quantum Realm to time travel, it makes sense that Kang would be a villain in the film. However, it is possible Majors could be introduced as the villain by the end of the Loki series, after all, if Ravana Renslayer is involved in the plot of the series, the Kang is undoubtedly not too far behind. It could be Renslayer is working with the TVA to ensure Kang never time travels to the 40th century. If she's also trying to maintain the proper flow of time, then Kang's very existence is a far bigger threat to the timeline than Loki's disappearance from 2012 in Avengers Endgame. The MCU has played fast and loose with the comics backstories before, and it's likely to be the same with Renslayer and Loki. For now, it's unclear whether Ravana Renslayer will be a full-fledged villain in Loki, or if she'll be on the fence, working occasionally as an ally with the TVA. She has the title of Judge here, which is already different to her comic book counterpart. Her role in the series probably won't change Kang's plans to dominate various realities, but Ravana's introduction and prominence as Kang's adversary and lover could very well alter the outcome of the future of the MCU's timeline for good. Going back a little bit back to the multiverse and nexus beings, in episode 1 in the beginning, according to Miss Minutes, the timeline is naturally chaotic. Any moment has the potential to be a so-called nexus point, where a branch in the timeline is created. Miss Minute suggests a person could create a branch by doing something as spectacular as starting an uprising or as mundane as being late for work. Given that's the case, it's reasonable to assume there were originally untold billions of unique timelines, some only slightly different to the one we know, but others no doubt far more bizarre and surreal. Unfortunately, Miss Minutes explained the different branches of the timeline became aware of one another resulting in a vast multiversal war. As she says it, countless unique timelines battle each other for supremacy, basically, Miss Minutes continued to explain. This war apparently came close to destroying all of time and space, and no doubt is the secret war easter egg teased by head writer Mark Michael Waldron. In the comics in 2015's Secret War event, saw all the Marvel timelines collide in an interdimensional conflict. Miss Minutes then went on to explain how the Timekeepers emerged, bringing peace to the multiverse by reorganizing all of existence into one singular timeline. These powerful beings are essentially the TVA's gods, considered all-knowing and all-wise, and the TVA's job is to maintain the timeline according to their will. Loki isn't exactly subtle with this analogy, given the TVA explicitly referred to the sacred timeline, i.e. the one that is in accordance with their gods, or with the will of their gods, and the trickster god himself senses the power the TVA willed. The timekeepers have no direct analog from the comics themselves, meaning they're difficult to pin down. Still, viewed through a cynical lens, it's likely these are the beings who triumphed in the multiversal war and were consequently able to impose their will upon all creation. They justify their dominance by insisting they are preventing another multiversal conflict, but in reality, they are simply enforcing their rule. The big twist of episode 1 came at the end of Loki's premiere, with the introduction of a unique villain yet to be introduced into the MCU. Working alongside Agent Mobius, Loki was recruited to help the TVA catch another variant, someone who risks endangering the sacred timeline. As it turns out, the variant is none other than an alternate version of Loki, who also broke free from the primary timeline of the events and has been popping up at random points in history. It was a twist the God of Mistress himself didn't see coming, but if there's anyone who probably knows the variant best, it's him. So who could it be? 
there is one obvious choice and that's probably Lady Loki. We already saw some set photos and we know Sofia DiMartino is playing another female lead. And from those set photos, she's wearing a similar costume that Loki wore, the male one, wore in Thor The Dark World. So it only makes sense. And Loki is known in the comics to shapeshift into her multiple times. And so we'll just have to see what happens next. So there you have it. That's my review and breakdown of Loki episode one. What did you think? What did you think of the show? What did you think of this video? Share your thoughts down below and don't forget to like, again, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. And again, follow my Instagram where you can get the latest updates on when videos of mine are coming out and to admire some fan art of mine that I regularly post. Alright, bye everyone.